Perrin. Well, let's play this footage of you from 13th of February because I'm sure you're aware we're going to talk about it. I really uh, thank you for your evidence tonight and I thank you because I, uh, having sit in this place now for uh, nearly five years, um, I have seen a dramatic change from when once the arts, uh, arts would come in and it would be a, this is what we're saying, you come prepared, you know exactly the questions I'm going to ask about the regions and the regions are now a topic of conversation. Were you affected by alcohol then? No, and uh, Andrew, you and I have had this discussion. I had a couple of glasses of wine, which I have uh, admitted to, um, and I have now openly discussed my medical issues that I have had. My throat often catches. It's, it's caught in this studio. Uh, and what I will say is the feedback I have had from the arts community because of that line of questioning and following on from the media focus has been 100% positive. I'm getting emails from regional arts organisations saying, thank you very much, Senator Davey, because if you won't ask those questions, no one will. And I've had calls from people within Creative Australia who have contacted me and said, I was watching that night. I watched the whole quest line of questioning I did not see a drunk person. I saw a passionate But person. you seem to lose your train of thought there. I mean, should you be, should you be drinking nine, at work? It's, a, it's 9, at 9, 9 to 9.30 at night after a 14-hour day. I was up again the next day at 6am. So if I was uh, intoxicated to the extent that a lot of people are implying, I would not have been able to function the next day like I did for another 16-hour day. But, but and what, what the media is actually saying, and this is what's been raised by, with me by people who've worked on the Respect at Work Set the Standard report, is the media are effectively saying, if you have a speech impediment, go home. Don't bother running. Well, hang on. Up. What about, if, and you, that's not what about if you're drinking at work, go home? Well, um, with all due respect, Andrew, and I will say it, I have been to plenty of press club lunches, eat including the Respect at Work lunch with Kate Jenkins, where there were a lot of journalists participating in the hospitality at, at that lunch and then coming into this place, filing their reports. So, so, so it's all right I if we all get drunk, including politicians I'm, at work, I'm, is it? Like, I'll get pissed and come on TV. I stand I mean... by the fact that I was not drunk. Right, so it's only two glasses as far as you're concerned because That's I listen to you speak now and I watch that footage and I do see a difference, I have to confess to you. And it's that. not 9.30 at night and I haven't done a 16-hour day. Um, but why can't you just say, my... look, I probably shouldn't have had a couple of glasses of wine? You I, know I'm, what I mean? I'm absolutely happy to say I probably shouldn't have had a couple of glasses of wine and I'm also very happy to say that I will be far more aware in the future and I will, uh, I will not be having a couple of glasses of wine when I know I need to go back into the chamber or into the committee. I'm happy to say that. All right. On top of the Barnaby thing, though, it, does, it, it did present sort of a, a poor image, I guess, for the Nats. What's your reaction to the Barnaby Joyce lying on the ground scenario? Well, Barnaby has also addressed that himself, and I will leave the commentary up to Barnaby. Do you think you're going to lose your pre-selection? No, I do not. Is anyone you're pretty spoken? confident, are you? I believe that I will be judged on my whole record and not on a 40-second video clip that's been subjectively edited. Well, I don't know if it's subjectively edited. I mean, it's what well, happened. You, you've taken a 40-second clip from a 12-minute uh, quest line of questioning. What's your, your view on the suggestion by Zali Stegel to have a, a ban across the board? Well, she hasn't said that. She has recommended um, random drug and alcohol testing. And I think I'm one of the few politicians who's actually said, if they're going to do it, bring it on. I'm not, I don't have a worry about that. The Greens are saying we shouldn't go down that when, path. When you're doing Other alcohol, people are saying we shouldn't go down that sure. path. Sure. When, when you're doing the alcohol testing, I guess, is it, it would it be... Is it zero? Is it over? It's not you like, proposing yeah. against Zali Stegel, but is well, it the driving limit? or? Well, that, and that is the question. That, that would have to be resolved. But from what I can gather, there is no uh, momentum, no push, no majority support for well, what's her the proposal. Sanction? What's the sanction? I mean, you're saying I wouldn't mind it. What's the sanction? I, that would be have to be determined by the parliament. 
and then I would also say that the key would be it mustn't be weaponised and it must apply consistency, consistently right across every person who works in this place. Sure. Well, you spoke about these health problems you've had. Mm. Doesn't that make it even sillier, I guess, that before you go into a parliamentary committee, given you have that issue, that you'd be having a, having a few wines? I... I don't think I have anything to add to that commentary. I, I mean, I think that... Uh, I think we've covered this topic well and truly over the last fortnight and I am absolutely amazed that the media, you, are still wanting to focus on it instead of focusing on the cost of living crisis, the upcoming election in, in Dunkley, uh, even the passage of the tax cuts last night, which was what I was invited on this program to talk about. OK, well, on those tax cuts, pretty good for regional Australians, would you say? Well, I think that... that Tax cuts, we always welcome tax cuts. They're not what we wanted to see. We wanted to see the original Stage 3 That'd tax cuts. They'd be better cuts. for the regions, though, aren't they? I, don't, I haven't seen the regional breakdown of the data. Well, but we know they are. They're, it's 84% across the country and regional Australians don't earn as much money. I mean, and region, regional Australians welcome these tax cuts and they welcome mm. the fact that the Coalition supported them. They'll be probably popular in Dunkley, you would have thought. I know it's not your backyard, mm. but... Well, What's your read on that? My understanding... By-elections are always uh, a bit of a swing against the government, but they look like they might hold on. Well, it's a, it's a significant margin that, that we have to get in Dunkley, 6.3%, uh, um, to, get, to get across the line there, but I think we will definitely eat away at it significantly. What the feedback from Dunkley is, is it's cost of living, cost of living, cost of living. There are large mm. concerns about the family car tax that Labor are proposing. Um, that is worrying people in Dunkley. If that's the case, you'd be expecting a good swing then. Well, we're hoping for a, a swing. Yeah, but, but if that's but the case, if the feedback there is cost of living, labor, I think vehicles. more interesting is that um, Prime Minister Albanese is trying to flag that expect a 7% swing away from the government. I... I I'm think not sure that's he's very those interesting. Words, has he? he's, he's expectation management from the mm. Prime Minister. Well, we get that on both. So you, you set the scene and be up front because Labor won't be. Well, so I'm, have you got? I'm three, not in Victoria. Percent, I'm not in the ground. I'm not, I'm not a commentator. I'm not a pollster. So I will see what the result is on Saturday. You must be talking to some Liberal colleagues, though. What are they saying they'll get there? Oh, they, they are working hard and making sure that their candidate, and Nathan is a very good candidate, and he's been working right. tirelessly. We'll leave it there. Parent Thank Abby, you very much.